Today is July 25th, 2017, and this is a CFTA New Business Partner Welcome Webinar. I'm Michelle Ellington, CFTA President, and I'd like to um, ask that you please join me in welcoming Evan Systems to CFTA as a new Diamond Level Business Partner. FM Systems created FM Interact, a cloud-based integrated workplace management system that helps facility and real estate professionals improve the management of space, occupancy, assets, moves, maintenance, leases, and property. Today, they will be showcasing their solution with all of us here today. If you are attending the upcoming CFTA conference in Madison, Wisconsin next week, you can follow up with FM Systems there as they will be an exhibitor as well as doing a pre-conference session and keynote presentation. Today's webinar is being recorded. Both the recording and slides will be made available on the CFTA YouTube page. The presentation is estimated to run about 45 minutes with the remaining time dedicated for Q&A. Feel free to send any questions using the questions dialog box either during the presentation to add it to the queue or save it for the end. At this time, I'd like to extend a special thank you to today's presenter, Robert Noren. Robert serves as a manager of applications engineer and technical sales with FM Systems. Robert, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure, and thank you for the introduction. Okay, so go ahead and jump in here. I'm just going to run through a, a couple slides, uh, just uh, showing a bit of uh, about who we are and, and what we provide, and then we'll take a look at our uh, at our system. So we do have a uh, very uh, vested interest in, in higher education solutions. We've been providing um, uh, solutions for, for higher education for uh, over 20 years. Uh, and today we're going to be taking a look at some of those different, uh, different uh, options um, and, uh, and addressing any questions we have. Uh, so FM Systems, uh, we've been around for a while. Uh, we were established in 1984 by Mike Shalai, who uh, again is, is very interested in uh, you know, the, the higher education world, making sure that uh, you know, we provide uh, um, great software to, to help people in that field. Um, we've sustained healthy growth. Of course, we are a, a, a member, a partner of uh, CFTA, also attend uh, just about all of the uh, major conferences around higher education that we can. Um, one thing that's unique about us is we're, we're really uh, just one company, uh, so we don't use a lot of resellers. We have direct customer support, uh, and that helps us maintain uh, healthy relationships with, uh, with all of our, our clients. So just to point out a few of our, our higher education customers, um, one thing that's interesting is you notice that they, they range in size from uh, you know, some, some smaller universities to some of the largest uh, in the country and, and of course internationally as well. Um, and you know, that's really due to the, the scale, uh, scalability, the flexibility of the system allows us to accommodate uh, any range or, or size. So for higher education, uh, there are a few uh, core uh, capabilities um, we like to highlight. One is to improve space utilization. Traditionally, especially in higher education, uh, you know, we found that the actual u the utilization rate of space is, is much, much lower uh, than we'd like to see, right, than a lot of corporate clients. So helping to, to get better utilization of that space is really key uh, to, to a solution like ours. Uh, and of course, getting better accuracy and visibility of your data. So having quick access to all of the, the information you need to be able to make decisions uh, to better uh, use your space, to utilize your space, to uh, maintain and, uh, and grow, right? Um, and also, of course, just being able to manage all aspects, uh, being able to drill down from a campus map to a building, to spaces, to look at uh, assets and, um, you know, any sort of equipment as well as uh, surveys and, and things like that. So giving you full, full visibility access to every part of, of your organization's facilities. And then of course, uh, streamlined reporting. Uh, very important, that's typically where we, we see the end result of all of this uh, data gathering. 
Um, we do have uh, a very specific uh, module, as we call it, for higher education. That is for uh, your you know, reporting for survey. Uh, so really being able to digitally capture all of the changes that happen in your space. This is going back to any sort of state or government reports you may have. Uh, it really streamlines, streamlines this process uh, and also gives you just a way to kind of track the process. Of, uh, of getting this information in the system. Uh, so we are a, a modular uh, system. So you can see here that in the, in the center we have space and assets and really that is our core because everything else around the, the edges here, all of our other modules kind of tie into that one way or the other. So of course the, the higher education survey, the mobile interface, uh, facilities maintenance, which is you know, both on demand and, and recurring or preventive maintenance uh, projects, which is very broad, right? It can be anything from construction, renovation, or even special events. Uh, sustainability, uh, which is also, um, you know, known as uh, environmental health safety, right? Uh, and of course, real estate, being able to manage um, parcels of property, your buildings, any sort of leases, subleases, things like that. And then one of the the more popular ones recently is a space reservation, uh, being able to actually schedule. Um, you know, uh, workspace, um, you know, labs, anything like that uh, through the system as well, and getting pretty powerful reports that, that allow you to see, you know, are you using this efficiently? Right? And then moving on to strategic planning, you know, what happens if we're, we're to grow or we need to accommodate a change, uh, whether it's reduction or addition to, uh, you know, different programs, things like that. Uh, and of course moves, right? Uh, that's something that is uh, time consuming, it can be complicated and really around automating that process. Okay, uh, one thing that's also uh, pretty unique to us, we do offer uh, perpetual, you know, uh, where you own it, you host it on your servers. We're also um, available in a SaaS software as a subscription. Um, you know, a lot of people are moving that direction, but we do have three different options. And the third is the perpetual hosted, where we just take care of it for you, although you own the software. So um, before we jump in here, just a couple, uh, few last notes, um, and we'll, we'll dive right in. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a, a variety of solutions. You can kind of see here some of the screenshots we have, which is that, that mobile interface allowing you to, to scan barcodes, bring up information. We do have a true bi-directional uh, integration with both Autodesk and Revit products. So we're even seeing some of that 3D viewing uh, down in the, uh, the lower left corner. Uh, and then also just having access to that information uh, directly from a tablet, smartphone, anything like that. Okay, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and jump in to the, uh, the presentation itself. Okay, so um, what we're going to take a look at is essentially a, uh, a standard or example of a fully implemented FM Interact uh, solution. Okay. So there's a couple key things to keep in mind. This is really truly designed to be configured uh, to give it the look and feel you're looking for or that you'd like, right? So matching your, um, you know, your colors, logos, utilizing your campus maps, different things like that. It is truly flexible uh, and we're designed to do that. That is one thing that kind of sets us apart. Uh, so it can change as uh, your needs change. Okay. Um, now, a few notes about the system in general. It is completely browser-based, so meaning that you do not need any desktop software, uh, you don't need any plugins, everything, even the setup and configuration of different forms and views can be done right through the browser here. Uh, also, it's a security role-based system, so you can uh, get as granular, granular as you'd like but it means that you can give access to an unlimited amount of general users, which is included as part of our software, to allow them to see things like evacuation plans or simply uh, locate where somebody might be uh, seated or um, you know, search for a specific type of space. Um, but then of course you can give uh, just that role-based dashboard access for uh, really just to, to make sure you're um, seeing the things that are important to you when you access the system. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here as myself. Uh, I am using 
our internal security, but we also support single sign-on. I know that's, that's important because we don't like to have to remember different passwords. Uh, and as I log in, I, uh, you notice I have a lot of our modules here on the, on the left-hand side. Those are the ones that I described during that uh, slide presentation. Um, we have a couple ways to navigate the system uh, that are popular, right? Of course, utilizing your existing cabinet stamps is something that's very, very common. Uh, making this dynamic where we can actually click through uh, from this campus level view into a building, you know, into floor, into space. And then, of course, we have a, a nice dynamic map that will zoom into your geographic scope. So even if you have a, a you know, multiple campuses across a state or, you know, even, uh, um, you know, a nationally uh, uh, spread out, it can show that on a, on a map similar to this that will get you down to street level. Uh, what's nice about this is right away we get some of those high level details around how we're utilizing our space. So these green bubbles uh, we, we use to, to um, you know, show overall uh, utilization, maybe the size of, uh, uh, of available space or how much we may have. So right away we get to that, uh, that view. And then, of course, being able to hover over any of these different pinpoints and uh, getting a bit more information. Right? So right here, we get to see uh, what the usable area is, right? our address, again, some basic details, and then a hyperlink to dive right into uh, a basic building page. So this is where I like to point out that we have some details here on the right-hand side. And when we say configurable, uh, we really mean that I can go in within a couple seconds and, and add in different attributes, uh, hyperlinks, things like that I may want to have at the building level. Right? So those are things that, that uh, we do initially and then also teach you how to do. So you're not having to rely on us to, again, scale up as you need or change things as they come up. Now, down below here, we have a link to our floor plans, or at least the 2D version of our floor plans. Uh, this is our, uh, you know, standard drawing viewer. Uh, just using my mouse to, you know, zoom in and out. I will mention that all of uh, the features I'm going to be showing you are available on a mobile platform as well. The difference being, of course, I'd use my finger gestures. It's formatted a little bit different uh, to make it easier on a smaller device. But it works very much the same. Now, from this view, you wouldn't know if this was AutoCAD or Revit. Again, we are uh, Autodesk preferred uh, industry partner. They're a client of ours as well. And that means that uh, we can make changes and have them reflected in the system very, very quickly if they're coming from uh, either uh, AutoCAD or Revit. So we start off with a basic view, but we use what we call graphic views to change the way we use the, these floor plans graphically. So right away, switching to the My Departments view, uh, we get a, a live or real-time legend uh, that's updated as soon as I make any change. And we can see where our different departments are located across this, this space. Uh, we can even do things like show if we have multiple departments assigned to an area, right? And also that percentage. You notice that this orange is slightly larger or much larger than the uh, the teal or blue here, and that's because they, they occupy or are responsible for a larger area or part of that area. So these graphic views are completely configurable. Uh, we, of course, functional activity uh, uh, codes and uses is, is very common along with that functional use view as we see here. Um, but these can be changed to, to really show anything you have access to, whether it's uh, furniture plans, or even that, you know, hazmat, uh, hazardous material storage, lab types, anything that relates to the space, uh, the people in that space, the assets in that space can be shown in a view like this. And then, of course, being able to interact with this floor, right? Clicking into a space and getting a bit more detail here. Uh, some very common things, right? The the simple room attributes. Uh, if this was, you know, uh, involved with any sort of move, if this was a space that was designed to accommodate an occupant, we could see that information as well. Uh, but you know, simply being able to see photos, attached documents, seeing what equipment we have in this room, and then of course being able to to drill down into that information as well, again, very quickly. So all of those are, you know, just a, in the way of getting information very, very quickly without having to navigate a lot of different screens. 
Now we have a lot of features around this viewer. Uh, one is called graphic theming that allows you to do ad hoc queries. You know, show me all of the space that's available uh, over you know, 500 square feet, different things like that. And then of course, a new feature is called markup and measure that allows you to make changes to the drawing on the fly. But one thing I do want to point out is this space I clicked on is a uh, reservable space. Uh, what that means is simply that I've designated this, is this uh, being available for people to actually reserve for uh, whatever purpose. And that's nice because again, directly from here, we can you know, uh, request a reservation, right, to, to actually utilize this space. Uh, to, you know, accommodates workflow and routing and different things like that. So again, it's, it's something that we've tied in very closely here. And we can see here, what's nice about this is it also ties into uh, the asset inventory. So we can see if there are different options for setup, uh, if there are amenities that we may have available to us. Uh, all of those things can be tied in, and that's really the key to having this integrated overall solution. So, you know, a couple other things I just want to point out before we dive into some of the other parts of the application here. Um, you know, one very common thing is just simply being able to search, again, either for a space, a person, a piece of equipment, uh, anything at all we have tracked in our system. So. Good example is just my last name. What this will do is return, uh, you know, anybody that matches that criteria. We have a couple of people with similar last names. It'll also show if I have any reservations upcoming uh, that I've made. Uh, but really, if I just want to find out where I'm sitting, being able to click through, it's highlighting that space, and it's also pulling up any information I'd like to show. Okay. Typically, uh, we're, we're integrating with HR systems, with other systems. That's something that's, that's very, very common. So if, whether it's a separate maintenance system, we you know, can tie into that. But most commonly, it's for employee information. Uh, being able to, to update that uh, on a nightly basis is what's most typical. Uh, that's another key thing is, is being able to actually tie into other systems. So we're not having to manually uh, update this information or duplicating work. Right, so very simple feature, but very, very powerful and, uh, and easy to use. So when we get down into some of the other parts here, I'm gonna pull up my left-hand menu. Uh, this gives me a lot, a lot more detail, a lot more access to the information in our system. So you notice one of my, uh, one of my favorite things is the favorites portion, because if we look into what is actually going into tracking our space, there's quite a bit, right? But in this case, things I look at most often, buildings, room updates, a few reports. So I'm going to start with this uh, room updates and take a quick look at that because this is really the way we're able to work with large amounts of, of information uh, very, very quickly and easy in a nice uh, user-friendly interface. Okay, So this is essentially an inventory of all of my space, right? everything that I'm tracking. Of course, when I click into this, we see, again, any of that information I may need to, to see. Uh, if we're using this for alternative uh, um, workspaces, reservations, if we wanted to see what assets are tied to that. What's key about this is we have you know, saved queries, but we can also filter this down and, and show you know, just for maybe one building, for example. I just wanted to get a bit more, you know, so that went from 19,000 records and change down to 530. So now this is all of the uh, uh, spaces within this particular building. So you notice it's very, very easy to really search uh, to, to get this information. And then of course, we even have the option to you know, right click, we can export this, uh, this list into, you know, standard formats like Excel, PDF. Again, key being that it's very easy to get information in and out of the system and also keep it up to date, right? We have the ability to edit. That is because I'm, a, I'm an administrator in the system. That's a you know, special permission. Not everyone can just come in here and change uh, and even edit multiple. So making those batch updates easy. And that's critical because uh, that's how we keep our information up to date and accurate. And then at the, at the end of the day, uh, that's, that comes back in the way of, uh, of reporting, right? Uh, being able to show, uh, again, in this case, it would be departmental occupancy, 
uh, could be survey status, which we'll take a look at in a, in a, in a moment here. But these reports are very, very powerful. Uh, and one very important note about them is they can be designed, uh, created, uh, modified directly in uh, the web browser interface. So even down to just making changes on the fly, you know, I'm able to really do that. This does not take a, uh, a master's degree in reporting. It's something that we can train you on in a fairly short amount of time. Uh, and we have, you know, 300 out of the box, but I'll just highlight some of the key features, you know, being able to, um, you know, filter down by different groups, really anything you want, that area or capacity, different use codes, things like that. Uh, and, you know, other key features around this is there, uh, um, you know, they could be scheduled to be automatically delivered uh, based on any frequency. So if there are reports that you want the first day of every month, you know, it's something that's very, very easy to set up. Probably more importantly, if there are reports that your boss wants uh, the first of every week or the first of every month, those can also be very, very easily scheduled within the system. And of course, they can be exported, uh, you know, um, as any you know, standard format. Okay, so a uh, few other things I want to take a look at real quick here. I'm actually going to switch over and uh, show a variation of uh, another way to, to kind of visualize our space. And this will segue into, into the next part here. Now bear with me one moment while I pull up another site. Because this is exciting new technology, which is the ability to not only view in that 2D traditional fashion, but a lot of people are switching to Revit uh, BIM models. So we do have the Forge Viewer, uh, which is the 3D large model viewer built into our system. So what's interesting about this site here is this is the Building Construction Authority Academy in Singapore. So what we're viewing is actually located in Singapore and they did a pilot project with us because they really wanted the ability to not only view 3D space, but also on a mobile device with the ability to click through, view additional information, and get that uh, virtual feel to the, to the actual space component. So why this is important is you see I, I've clicked on what, uh, you know, one of these uh, uh, condensing units. Uh, the information that we're seeing below is pulled in directly from the model. So nobody had to, you know, physically enter this into our system. It does come in through that. Uh, that bi-directional integration. But having that quick access to those details and again, making it very easy to get it in the system is, is really critical. And then of course, having access to you know, uh, websites, owner's manuals, things like that, uh, also you know, very useful. But not only that, if we come in and just simply select anything in this model, on the right hand side, we get any details uh, that, that are uh, available to us from that BIM model, from the Revit model. So in this case, a wall, is it load bearing? What are the dimensions? What's the finish? Uh, all of these you know, key components. And that's really anything I click on, even down to receptacle, maybe what uh, panel it's tied to, you know, different things like that. And then taking it a step further, being able to then jump into, say, equipment records, where we can see uh, the, the, the service history, right? The full details of that, that equipment, which we see here, right? So we're looking at that same thing, where if we've used parts, how this relates to the different systems in our, uh, in our facilities, and of course, you know, open service tickets, the, you know, all the past service history, preventative maintenance, and then of course, documents and images as well. So again, it's within a couple of clicks, we're able to get a tremendous amount of information. Whereas before, we may have to look through you know, uh, piles of paper, Google it, whatever it might be, just to get a, a few key pieces of, uh, of information. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch back over here because that is pretty good uh, uh, view of our, our space information. But of course, higher education survey is also critical to a lot of our clients. Uh, this allows you to, uh, you know, have your or survey, surveys digital, digitally tracked uh, with any sort of notifications and need to, be, need to be tied into that along with, you know, various reports that you need to be able to uh, generate and, and send off to the appropriate people. So if we just take a look at a few of these views here, 
you know, so again, this is that data view. And right away, we're seeing, uh, you know, a list of our rooms, and we even have some color coding here that allows it to, allows us to see if we're complete or not. And what I'm gonna do is just, I click through and then see uh, what information we have. Now, um, I believe Wiley Coleman is actually on the call as well, and he's been giving me some tips because he is our uh, he is our industry sales director for higher education and healthcare. Wiley, I'm not sure if you're uh, if you're able to jump in here as well because you uh, you've spent a lot of time actually developing this with our consultants. But feel free if you're if you're on there. So as I click through here, space information, some of the things we're tracking, right? Being able to associate the functional category codes to rooms. Uh, also any occupants uh, associating uh, um, investigators to rooms as well. Organized research accounts, room amenities. You can see this is actually going um, you know, into, into a lot of detail, right? What amenities are in there. Also chemicals. Right, radioactive materials, also things we can track on that space level uh, that relate back to our reporting. And then, of course, you know, being able to run through those surveys, uh, noting when, when it's complete. This is our approvers view. Uh, the the actual respondents view is is very similar, but you know, obviously geared and permission to them. So along with this, you can see we have other abilities, uh, grant expenditure. Um, grant awards, right, those different views we may need to track or information we may, may need to track. And then, of course, being able to um, open up any sort of reports relating back to this, which again is, is very critical when we come into that. So this being that space summary utilization, pretty basic, but again, within a couple seconds, being able to pull that up and see where we are. And then simple things like having, you know, access to a uh, checklist for our surveys. Right, which we can get in really quick here. All right, so again, really useful stuff available here on the uh, on the full version or any sort of mobile device. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to spend a, just a couple minutes going through some of the other kind of critical uh, parts here. Uh, facilities maintenance is another big part. Uh, you know, everybody needs a system, hopefully, to uh, to track uh, incoming service requests. Again, that relates back to space. And why that's important is because it allows end users, students, really anybody you give access to, be able to to request you know service for uh, any ver variety of, of different uh, um, items. Right. So a few things here. You know, is this a health, safety, or security issue? Yes or no, right? Knows who I am, uh, the actual room I might be assigned to, but I can't actually select from a floor plan if I'm in a different area. Uh, being able to attach photos and images if we have, you know, damaged equipment or crack in the uh, the sidewalk, anything like that. And then, of course, being able to, you know, specify what type of issue we're having. Key here is with the automation, with the integration, we have space management, it really streamlines this process as well. Again, it does tend to tie in all together. What's happening is anybody that needs to be notified of this is, is getting an email or text, again, seamlessly and being able to keep these, uh, these things up to date. All right, so we have uh, a few minutes, and I'll just uh, see uh, Michelle if there are any questions on your side before I dive into some of the more some more of the details here. Okay, let me go ahead and check the question queue and see if any pop in here. Uh, normally they don't come out to the end, so oh, looks like we might have one or two. Does your reserver room feature integrate with Google Calendar? Ah, that is a great question. So currently, we have a, uh, a true bi-directional integration with Microsoft Outlook. But I can tell you without getting into too much detail that the uh, Google Calendar tie-in is coming down the line very quickly. Um, couldn't say when, but it is an active uh, roadmap initiative. So, not here today, but definitely will be. Okay, 
Okay, well, thank you. Um, that is the only question in the queue, but attendees do feel free to keep them coming, and we'll get to them at the end, if not before. Thank you, Robert. You bet, absolutely. So a couple other things here, since I, I skipped around, but do want to highlight. Um, the reports are on higher education survey. Again, that's kind of what we'd like to see coming through here. Uh, we have a, a we have quite a few. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I do want to point out uh, a few key ones that we have here. Right, the uh, PI dollars per square foot for all all part, uh, all departments. Right, um, the room listing. Right, uh, center dollars per square foot. These are some again really critical reports that that come standard with our system. And then, of course, down to you know the different area or functional reports in here. Okay, so I'll just review a few of these for us. Now, uh, by the time uh, this conference rolls around, we'll actually have a major update to this piece as well, which will give us some of those new report looks. But again, to highlight some of the things we're able to track very easily here, down to that building or site building floor level and then even down to the room, right? Just some basic information, but very, very easily being able to, to access and pull this up. Okay. And that transfers across to uh, space as well here. What we do if we take a look, again, we have quite a few of these, whether it's that uh, employee directory type report, uh, space analysis, how we're doing as far as overall occupancy are, are again, very, very popular. And then even things like the, the actual occupancy by building. I've been able to dive down there. Now we're not gonna have a whole lot because we don't have a lot of occupancy, but simple things like being able to show, yep, we have one building that's actually populated, but where are we as far as that utilization rate? If we wanna be around 70%, that's pretty challenging when it comes to, uh, to actually getting that level of utilization, but that's our benchmark. So again, just some different ways to kind of visualize this, uh, this level of detail here, right? And then also in the way of service requests, right? What, uh, you know, what are our open work orders? How are we doing as far as uh, response time? Uh, you know, what is our annual cost of maintenance? Those are some very, very typical things. And kind of going down the list here, you know, what are critical dates uh, for leases, you know, or lease agreements uh, that we might have? and being able to, to access that information. Right, so this being any uh, anything that we're tracking our system in the way of leases, whether that's sub, sublease, if it's parcel of land, uh, who's the owner of that, how is it being used? Uh, this can even be tied into, say, a, a space request form, right? If we need it for a certain uh, um, you know, program, initiative, whatever it may be, being able to leverage this information we're tracking under the system to, again, make, make powerful decisions around that. And then I think one that uh, speaks to, to many people here is the strategic planning. Uh, this is a fairly uh, up or newly updated uh, portion of the application, but what this allows you to do is uh, really plan for any sort of changes you may have. Uh, you know, a strategic planning project is any any uh, issue we may have, you know, should we buy a new building and can we repurpose an existing space, you know, any of those different things we may want to track. So what I'm going to do is just create one very, very quickly and show, of course, information requirements that we may have. I'm going to go ahead and add this right here. And this will allow me to then add in, you know, that geographic scope. We're going to use our, you know, let's say, our main campus here. And see what we have have for that. Uh, with the scenario planning module uh, in the scenario planning project, we have different options, right? We can have as many different, uh, you know, potential uh, scenarios as we may want, right? What if we're to grow? What if we are adding a new building? Those different things. In this case. You can add in one simple one here. And the first thing I'm going to do is manage uh, which buildings I'm working with. So right now it's gathering a lot of this information. I'm actually going to pull up, uh, say, my building here. And we 
can see, all right, we'll go ahead and do that. Now, if you notice, it's asking me, well, do I want to use a, the production drawing or do I even want to use a hypothetical drawing? This could be for renovation. This can you know, tie into that, that type of thing as well, even into, uh, say, the project management. And I'm just going to add in a few of these. It shows, well, we, you know, nobody's using it right now. That's fantastic. That gives us a lot of flexibility. What this will do then is being able to start working, forecasting, uh, adding in groups, right, adding in our different phases to see how we can better utilize this. So it's asked me reorganize forecast right for the future so this can tie into um, you know how can we uh, maybe retrofit our existing space uh, being able to see well if we keep on that same path you know when are we going to be out how can we better better utilize our resources today so again it's a pretty powerful tool um, I want I won't dive too far into the details but I did want to give you a quick overview uh, of what it is actually about And then down to, of course, some of the others, sustainability, being able to track not only your uh, certifications, uh, but also um, you know, energy consumption uh, and even sustainability projects and initiatives and being able to communicate those out to other people's having benchmarks, um, even that, you know, say, uh, you know, project by allocation or sustainability projects and what that cost benefit may be. And then, of course, a couple of the others here, uh, project management, right? Anything from, uh, you know, relamping, putting in uh, high efficiency bulbs to, in this case, right, uh, renovate the provost's office. And again, you can see here, there's a lot of details we're tracking, having detailed phase phases incorporated in here. All of these can also um, utilize, again, automated notifications in the way of, of email and text to kind of keep everyone in line, making sure we're on track with our, our start and end times. And you can see tracking the, the actual completion of these different phases. Uh, being able to associate tasks and team members. So bringing in others, which will give them access to be able to update this information you know, as they need to. Uh, and down to, to contracts, right? which would incorporate not only, you know, what we have uh, at, at the top pane, but also, you know, uh, even allowing vendors to submit bids, uh, tracking of, of invoices and change orders as well. And then, of course, simply having documents available to us. So I think we've gone through most of the modules. Uh, at this point, and we have a few minutes left, um, but just wanted to, to check in and see if we had any additional questions come through there. Now, right now, I do not see any questions in the queue. Uh, does anybody have any additional questions they want to send out right now? Feel free to. Okay, I don't see any coming in if you want to continue. Okay, very good. So, you know, another important component to this is mobility. So I'm actually going to access our mobile site, but I'm gonna use my uh, browser just because it's a lot easier than trying to, to switch over to my tablet when we're presenting here. Uh, but it looks uh, very, very much the same. It's just really formatted, again, to be much easier to use on a mobile device. So utilizing that, same uh, authentication. This gives me that permission to access. Now, the key things about this is it is the exact same database. Um, it's the exact same views. It, again, it's just it's a lot easier to use on a, on a smartphone and tablet. This is critical uh, when we need to make updates on the field, when we are doing you know, different surveys or condition assessments, uh, being able to access and update this information uh, remotely is, is critical. So what I'm going to do here is uh, take a look at, at how this actually looks from this view. So I'm going to pull up our floor plan here. And again, we'll be able to see a, a very similar view of what we have. Again, having those different graphic views, the ability to, to zoom in. And what's really nice about this is making changes on the fly. So I'm going to expand that a bit here. 
So again, having that you know, view for evacuation, shelter, safety and security information, uh, open service requests, or where we have different uh, uh, labs or even available rooms for, for reservations of telling. Again, the big thing here is I am using my mouse, but this would typically be using my mouse or my finger gesture, zooming in and out, pinch to zoom. But we can even see here, being able to click through, again, we get a lot of these different details. We get access to the same information. It is just, you know, uh, a, lot, uh, a lot more user friendly from the mobile perspective. And even making batch changes around here is also possible. And even, you know, doing on the fly moves if we are in a, in a case where we're tracking where people are actually sitting. But even down to things like the, you know, asset management, uh, being able to access uh, our inventories, whether that be uh, equipment uh, and what for labs or, you know, uh, office oriented, oriented equipment, furniture, all those different things, which we find that uh, people are, are using extensively here. So diving into that, and then simply being able to not only do that, but also with that same type of search or global search here, being able to, to return results on that again very quickly. Uh, what's nice about having this on a mobile device is we can utilize things like QR codes or barcodes, right? To have maybe the um, you know location uh, information just by, by scanning a code, having that pull up directly on our phone, um, or certainly you know just needing to find out where a, where a, a room is located right on your campus. So all of those things again having having it available just uh, readily on uh, on any sort of uh, iPhone, Android tablet, things like that. Okay, so I think we're, uh, we're just about at that uh, 45 minute mark. Um, so uh, probably a perfect place for me to, to end my presentation and start to address whatever questions we have. Is that sound like plan, Michelle? does. Uh, you do have one question. Are there multiple servers available, such as a live production server and a non-production testing server? Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, I can't think of any time we've had uh, fewer than two. By default, we always set up a test environment and a production environment. Um, now, sometimes there's uh, can be uh, two additional. One is that quality assurance and another for training. But the idea is that, yeah, we want to have your test environment up and running uh, so that you're able to, to work with that, make sure everything is you know, working how you want it, and then moving that over to production. We also use that when we roll out updates um, to be able to apply that to a test environment. Make sure it's, it's working how you expect before moving it into production, uh, which actually is one thing I, I do want to mention that sets us apart. Uh, is our upgrades uh, are you know, seamless. Uh, they also are uh, contractually guaranteed uh, to carry any uh, changes, reports, configurations uh, that you've made or that we've made uh, through the life cycle of the product. So that means that if you go in, you add a new view, a new form, that's gonna go through uh, or carry through any upgrade that we have, right? So long answer, but uh, most definitely yes, multiple environments are, are always the case. Great, uh, you have a question here uh, asking if you can show more management. Sure, so um, I, I'd have to, <laughs> I'd probably have to ask if, if we're talking about uh, more of the facilities management or project management. Uh, we have a, quite a bit in the, in the system that, that uh, relates to, to actual management. Uh, well, move, move management. Oh, move management, absolutely. Sorry, I, I, re, I read that incorrectly. Yep, yep, you bet. So there's a couple ways to, to work with move management. Uh, one I'm gonna show you very, very quickly is the on the fly moves. So when I go into my floor plane here, you notice I have a little person icon. And if I simply need to uh, change somebody's location, this allows me to simply drag and drop. Now, in the way of move management, that's not really you know, what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. 
So another way to go about that is right from the floor plan, you notice if I right click, this gives me the ability to edit uh, the space information, split it between different apartments, uh, you know, assign zones like HVAC and Wi-Fi, but related to this, creating a move ticket. Right, so I can do that directly from here, but a lot of times that will also come through in the way of a new move request. We'll be able to see here. So if I access the new move request form, this is very standard uh, form we have set up here, but again, this can be really tailored to, to meet whatever uh, you need to be able to track. And it's populating my information and also allows me to potentially select, you know, where I, I might move to. Now I'm doing the individual moves, but I will mention that, you know, most commonly we see this in say a, a group move fashion. So this will, well, let's take a look at say vacant and reserved spaces. Well, all right, I see that I have some available here. Go ahead and select one of these. And then also taking into account, you know, the move date with calendar restrictions, meaning that, you know, we can only request moves certain types adding assets to this, you know, this can be uh, pretty robust, but the idea is being able to submit this for approval, uh, which will be directed to, you know, somebody to actually, you know, carry through with this. So that's uh, about the <laughs> about the quickest move demo I can do, but I wanna make sure we uh, were uh, uh, given enough time for the, the other questions here. Okay, um, I have a question for you. Yes. With just floor plans in general being kind of this, you know, new frontier that people are trying to all figure out with wayfinding and navigating and just tracking so much information in what I call the interior world, the interior base map that really has not really been created yet. Where is FM Systems focusing on development right now and what can we expect to see in your systems if if the world opens up to you how you guys want it to? Sure, uh, and that's a very good question. What I'm actually going to do is switch over just to a different site so I can kind of show you what, what we're envisioning. So, you know, traditionally, um, you know, floor plans, layouts, things like that are, are cumbersome uh, because you need to have a you know, a bit of knowledge of, you know, these these fairly complex programs, something like AutoCAD, right? But not really geared towards the, um, you know, your end user. So what we're focusing on uh, in the near future is the ability to, to give um, that more basic user um, the option to update information, to actually do a bit of, of drawing or uh, say even renovation directly from uh, the web browser here as well. So the idea being that in this case, if I pull up a tool we call Markup and Measure, you can see that I've already started to you know, modify my space, outfit it the way I like, and you can see where I'm kind of going here. It's really giving it that more of the general user and empowering them to be able to, to start uh, making changes uh, and, and affecting the system in a, you know, obviously a, a very basic way. So that's one, but probably more of the trend is around real-time utilization. Uh, right now, you know, what we see is a lot of people are, are having to manually update this, uh, this type of information. So we're uh, very, very interested and very focused on things like sensor technology, right? Being able to see if a room is actually occupied or how many people are in that room, right? In the way of classroom, is it being, you know, widely underutilized? Is it, you know, uh, very efficient in that way? So we have things like um, vibration, uh, motion sensors, heat, uh, you know, heat sensors that go in, in chairs or uh, even a, a really cool technology, which is an over the door um, anonymous camera that tracks, you know, the movement of people and can also be used to, to actually see how many uh, um, you know, individuals are say in, a, in an open area. So that's where we're really heading is towards that you know, real live, where are we at now? How many people are where, you know, uh, that type of thing, which also brings us into the world of um, building automation kind of sensor technology. So 
you know, if we have a class scheduled for uh, for a specific time, you know, maybe tying in and actually turning on the air, air conditioning a little ahead of time, things like that. And then once that, you know, starts to uh, or goes into session, how many people are showing up, right? Um, and also just down to that seat, is somebody actually there uh, in a, say, a reservable space or, you know, is it uh, something that we might might be able to, to cancel? So in a very high level, those are a couple of big initiatives, putting the power of, uh, of uh, updating, keeping these things accurate in, in a lot of people's hands, as well as that, you know, real time sensing capability. Internet <laughs> Yeah, with those sensors, I, I guess I read an article recently about Microsoft um, creating an app called PathGuide that's using existing sensors and the fact that people already go most places you want to go and getting that data from that. Is that kind of along the lines that you're mentioning? Yeah, yeah. Now, in the, that's a really good point because um, as I was just in a meeting with our product management, we, we were talking about this. And yes, that is the, the way we're heading, but we also want to be cautious, right? Um, the Internet of Things is powerful, but it does, you know, open us up to some vulnerabilities, right? To be able to tie into all these different systems and, uh, you know, probably even scarier is control different things, you know, from various systems. So although we are going towards a, you know, Internet of Things type uh, world, um, we're, we're, you know, approaching it responsibly. So taking the, the information or getting the things that we may want to digest, but not necessarily, you know, sending it back or controlling other devices, as you mentioned with, say, Microsoft. So definitely the way we're heading, um, you know, we're just uh, really focused on on things that relate uh, specifically to our core competency at this point, though. Well, very interesting. It's just relying on the technology and the, their sensors in the phone instead of GPS or wireless beacons or anything. So pretty powerful. Uh, yes. Have another question here. Are room records and details stored in the AutoCAD drawing in any way? For example, when a modification is made to a room, how does the floor plan get updated? That is a fantastic question. So uh, what I'm going to do and just a couple seconds here is pull up AutoCAD so we can actually take a look. Um, the answer is that it can be stored in AutoCAD, uh, but doesn't need to be. So what I'm doing, and so, and by the way, I actually created a space and what this pop-up was asking me is if I want to accept the changes and I will. And it's telling me that I've actually added those spaces so you can see that when I was drawing down here, I didn't save the one, but uh, I actually added and those changes are reflected in AutoCAD. Now you can see I actually have a ton of layers on here. So what I'm going to do is just isolate this so it's a little bit easier to work with. And you notice we have an FM Systems ribbon on the top. If I click the edit button and then on a space, you can see that I actually have that uh, live connection to the database. So while this is not physically or I guess technically stored in the file itself, we still have access right to this information. So if I was to say changes from, you know, say a conference room to uh, maybe a large lab, right, make that change. If I were to come back here to FM Interact, this is that same room, we're going to be able to see that change reflected immediately, which is that space standard being the large lab. So um, it does communicate with AutoCAD. It, those details are available in AutoCAD. A lot of times they're stored there initially and we'll bring them in. But the fact of the matter is we find it's just much easier to actually manage uh, from our system and then communicate that back to the, the AutoCAD file. And the same goes for Revit. Okay, well, I think that we are about rounding up our time today. Um, let me see if there's any more last questions from our attendees. And I think that we are up oh, there's one more. Is there a way to track what user modifies a room? Uh, I am really glad somebody brought that up because uh, yes. Now we have two 
ways to actually do that. We have what's called a change request, where so you can give uh, people the ability to request that information is changed for a space and actually goes through the approval process. But more specifically to that question, I'm actually going to dive into a room uh, inventory view and click on a space here. And you notice we have a historical data uh, button. So I will mention that this feature is available for any data set, any table, any inventory, anything in the, in the system. And what it does is track uh, who made the change, time stamp, time and date stamp, and then it will give you what changed highlighting there. So the group or department, I changed from you know, being blank to, uh, to a different uh, uh, department code. So it's showing me the old value, the new value, who changed it and when. And again, yes, so we, we definitely track all of those things in the system. Uh, similar to AutoCAD, if I was to update something for this space in AutoCAD, that would also be tracked in this, this type of view. You can report on these and, and also get an automated notifications around them as well. Okay, well, that's great. Um, great demo. I think it was definitely time well spent. Appreciate your time today. Um, Robert, before we conclude, is there any last thing that you'd like to say to the audience today? Well, I, I look forward at, at hopefully seeing a lot of you at upcoming uh, conferences. You know, one thing that's that's uh, really great about the higher education world is that um, you know we everyone likes to communicate. So we're we definitely want to hear from you uh, if you have ideas or uh, if you want us to share some of the initiatives uh, that that we have or put you in touch with with other organizations. We we really love that, and that's something that's pretty unique to. To, to your world. So uh, with that, um, say thank you very much. And it's really a pleasure to, to be able to, sh to show some of our system today. Great. Thank you. And uh, thank you to all the attendees who joined us today. As a reminder, you can find FM Systems as an exhibitor, keynote, and pre-conference uh, workshop presenter at the upcoming CFTA conference next week in Madison, Wisconsin. For more information on CFTA webinars, you can visit us at our website, www.cfta.org, and see more webinars that have been pre-recorded on our YouTube channel. Thank you. <laughs>